Today we're going to be installing these adjustable upper control arms on an Infiniti G37. Now the first thing we're going to do is jack up the vehicle and then we can remove the wheel. Now the reason why we need to install adjustable upper control arms on this vehicle is because it's lowered and it has an adjustable coilover suspension. Now on a vehicle with double wish one front suspension, you got your lower control arm and upper control arm that connects to the steering knuckle by these two ball joints here. Now that in turn causes the wheel to be perpendicular to the road surface over here. Now this car uses a double wishbone design where you have the lower A arm at the bottom here and you've got the steering knuckle here that leads up to the upper A arm which is the one we're going to change and then you've got the coilover suspension that has been put in here. Now on a vehicle with lower suspension your suspension link is now much shorter and that causes the angle to change of your lower control arm which also in turn causes the angle of the upper control arm to change. That moves your steering axis, which is between these two ball joints, inward, which also causes the tire to have a camber angle. Now the problem with this suspension setup is that your tire is now contacting only at a point here instead of across the flat surface, which will cause a lot of tire wear along the inside edge of this tire. And you can see here on the inside edge of the tire that it's worn down on the inside here. My fingers are catching as I rub it along each individual thread, whereas on the outside here it's nice and smooth. Now that's because this vehicle has been running for a little while with this camber angle, and you can see the damage that it has caused to the tires. Now in order to combat this issue, we're going to install an adjustable upper control arm, which is going to bring that upper ball joint back up and in alignment so that your wheel now is perpendicular to the ground, but you're still lowered maintaining that nice ride height for handling. So we're going to replace this arm here so we have an adjustment in and out to control the angle of this wheel. So in order to get this upper control arm off it's held on by a pinch bolt to the knuckle over here and two 14 millimeter bolts that bolt into the body at the back there. So I'm going to first start by using a 14 millimeter socket and 14 millimeter wrench and we'll break that free. And then we can remove the pinch bolt and then I'm just going to pry up on the upper control arm and that should free it and you have to watch this knuckle because we don't want to damage any brake lines or ABS lines so what I'm going to do is wrap a bungee cord around the coilover strut next up there's a 14 millimeter bolt here that we're going to remove from the body then we're going to remove this rear 14 millimeter bolt okay I'm going to try it with a 14 millimeter wrench so we're just backing this bolt off from the body and you can see that this bolt here is hitting the coilover. Okay, now the bolt on this side, I was able to get out. So I've got a jack underneath the lower control arm and we're going to jack it up. Okay, and stop right there. We should be able to get this bolt out right now. Ah, no. So because jacking up the lower control arm didn't compress the spring properly enough, we're going to release it from the top of the strut mount here by removing these three 12 millimeter nuts. Now I'm going to remove the last strut nut over here. So in order to help with that bolt we got a jack underneath the lower control arm here and then we'll slowly jack up on the lower control arm as I try to push this bolt out. Okay there we go and now with all the bolts free I can remove the upper control arm from the vehicle. So here we have the OE control arm removed from the vehicle. Now the first thing I'll notice is it is fairly lightweight and it's made of aluminum. Now the ball joint on it is still in pretty good shape despite having all those miles. And so it's out with the old and in with the new. We've got these new upper control arms that are adjustable from Mevotech. Let's see what we have in the box here. So if you take a closer look at the OEM control arm compared to the Mevotech control arm, you'll notice right away that this is much beefier and chunkier because it's made of a steel material with these tubes here that are welded to this plate. Now this plate here has a slot that allows the ball joint to move in and out to control the camber angle accordingly. It also comes with its own ball joint here and that moves nice and smoothly just like a brand new ball joint. Now also included in the package is some instruction sheets that tell you how to adjust the caster and we've got two bump stops here in case you're bottoming out. Now if we take a closer look at how this ball joint is secured to the control arm here you can see that it slides back and forth and you've got these little tracks on the control arm here. Now if I take this apart you'll see that we have this plate here and that gives it adjustment for the caster. Now this plate here will actually slide back and forth and how you position the ball joint in here according to the notches is what controls the caster angle. So for example if we line up this here where we have the two fillets at the top here we've got this side of the ball joint that would be facing the outside of the vehicle then that correlates to a zero degree change in caster angle relative to the OEM control arm. Now let's say we wanted to adjust the caster a little bit to give you either a little bit more steering feedback or because it has been adjusted by putting those coilovers on well you can take this and just rotate the ball joint around 
And in this case now, with this pointing upward, we've got a negative one degree change in the caster angle. Now when we go ahead and install that ball joint, this plate is going to stay in the same relative direction, but you can see that the center line of this ball joint here has shifted back. So when I install it here, you can see that this has now moved back, and that is what gives you your caster change. It only moves the ball joint in this direction. Now in this case, we're just going to go with a zero degree change relative to OEM. So we're going to match up the plate where the fillets are at the top. Ball joint is going to face out this way. That's why we have this flange here. I'm going to go ahead and install that onto the control arm. And then I'm going to put the washer on and then tighten down that nut. Now because an alignment shop is not nearby, we just need to get this upper control arm adjusted to roughly the same dimensions as the OE so we can get the car to the shop and on the rack. Now what you can do to get a more accurate measurement is to measure from the bushing axis to the ball joint plane right now. So for example, I'm going to measure this one here from the back of the bolt to the center of the control arm and I got about eight and three quarters of an inch. So same thing over here, I measure here and I've got to just notch this out a little bit more and I've got about eight and three quarters of an inch. Now as another hint, we know that Mevotex catalog specifies this arm to adjust plus minus two degrees. So you can pretty much assume that the center between this plate here is actually gonna be your zero degree camber adjustment. So now once you've got it in place, we're gonna use a 27 millimeter socket to snug this nut down. All right, so with the ball joint at the correct distance, I'm gonna go ahead and insert the new control arm. And then we're gonna put in our 14 millimeter bolt into the body and then we're going to thread in this guy now this one is going to be a little bit difficult i'm going to wiggle this bolt in and catch it and then we're going to snug down these bolts here so next we're going to install the ball joint into the steering knuckle so we'll just put that in there and push down on the arm so that it seats and then i can take the pinch bolt and install that over there and then we can install the 14 millimeter nut and then we'll just tighten that down and now we're going to install these new wheels. Then when the vehicle gets to an alignment shop, we're going to have the sensors mounted to the tire itself. And we're going to read the camber angle and adjust it according to this upper ball joint position over here. And once the reading is correct on the alignment machine, according to the OEM, you come in with a box and wrench here and snug this top bolt down just so that it's nice and tight and it holds its alignment before we give it a final tour. And now once all of the adjustments are made, I'm going to remove the wheel again. All right, now I'm going to loosen everything up here and then we'll pop up the upper control arm. Now the reason I have to disconnect this upper ball joint from the steering knuckle in order to get the proper torque is because with this lowered vehicle, even at the full suspension droop, I won't be able to get my torque wrench, even though it's a flex head torque wrench, up in there because it'll just touch the fender. So I disconnected it from the knuckle and now we can properly torque it. And now with the upper ball joint in the position exactly where you want it, according to your alignment rack, we're going to torque this 27mm nut down to 120 foot-pounds. Now I'm going to push this ball joint all the way back to give the maximum camber, because this is my brother's car and I don't really care, I'd rather him burn his brand new tires all the way to the alignment shop. Mm. Damn, 120 is a lot. Ah. Okay, finally. So with the final torque on the upper ball joint adjustment nut, I'm going to install this upper ball joint back into the steering knuckle. There we go. And then I can reinstall this bolt here, and then we'll tighten this down. And now using a torque wrench, I'm going to tighten this down to 41 foot-pounds. Now if we torque the two bushing bolts right now while the suspension is at full droop, and we then put this vehicle back up at right height, what's going to happen is these bushings will be at stress. So what we're going to do is jack up this lower control arm to bring the suspension right up to ride height here, just enough so that it lifts off of the jack stand that it's on. I'm just gonna get in here with my torque wrench and torque this down to 52 foot-pounds. And then we'll get the front control arm bolt. So with all the bolts torqued, we're gonna release the lower control arm from the jack, drop the suspension, now we're going to reinstall the wheel. Finally, we're going to take the vehicle for a test drive and then we'll be off to the alignment shop.